Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. The Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4th, 1776 by one person. John Hancock said he was going to sign with letters so big that the king would not have to use his spectacles to read it. Hallelujah. The uh, remaining 54 signers did not sign until August the 2nd of 1776. Uh, what they literally were doing was risking their lives. Jefferson stated that they mutually pledged to each other their lives, fortunes, and sacred honor. After a moment of silence, someone else added in and said, I just doubled the price on my head. Hallelujah. The August 2nd proceedings were kept silent for 50 years. Thus, the uh, celebration of July 4th, uh, Independence Day on July 4th, of course, is dated on the uh, Declaration of the 4th of July. Those who signed the concert, of those who signed the Declaration of Independence, five were captured by the British and treated, uh, tortured and killed as traitors. Two had their sons killed by the, by the British. Nine died in the Revolutionary War. One was even driven from his dying wife's bedside only to return to find her dead and his 13 children missing. In other words, there was a great price paid for our Declaration of Independence. Okay, and so um, and, and here we are today and systematically, bit by bit, the, um, the socialistic Marxist, Marxist liberals are destroying uh, everything that the Declaration and the Constitution stood for. Now, the Constitution wasn't instituted until 11 years later in, in, in 1787 is when the Constitution was ratified, 1787. Um, but something interesting I noticed um, uh, when it refers to... Uh, Nathan posted the whole declaration on his Facebook the other day. He said, you need to read this. You know, because they did a poll recently, and most people in America don't even know why we celebrate July the 4th. The young people don't have, the, they got their head in the sand, don't know their head from a hole in the ground. They don't even know. The only thing, all they think of is fireworks and a day off and hamburgers and hot dogs. They don't know what it's all about. Okay. And uh, they, they don't understand the, the tyranny of the British Empire over, human, over lives, uh, the, the monarchical uh, system of the, uh, the, the ruling over people. And um, our, our generation today has no clue. You know, they think, they think as long as they can get the, the iPhone and get the free check and get, you know, the government taking care of them, everything is going to be cool. No, it's not, because the the, until the, when the government gets complete control, you are just going to be a, you know, until your, your usefulness runs out, and when your use of runs out, you're done. Okay? Um, you know, it's just, ha you know, the, the whole thing that's going on all over the place with the homosexual marriage, the, um, you know, now, listen, I, well, you, wherever you stand, the Confederate flag, the fact that people, you know, you can't even go to the Arlington Cemetery. They've taken the Confederate flag out of the gift shop at Arlington Cemetery. What happened at Arlington? It was one of the biggest battles of the entire Civil War. There were Confederates and there were, you know, and there were Northerners. Now, we could do a whole history lesson for you today uh, about the uh, Civil War and, and other underlying causes for the war. But the fact is, uh, they, they took it off of Fort Sumter, which is where the war started. I mean, this has gone crazy. We, it's, it's a sign of racism. People, African Americans served in the Confederacy and fought under the banner of the Confederate flag. Okay, it's history. We, we're rewriting history. So, uh, and, and, and liberty can be lost. Did you know that? Liberty can be, and we're, we're, ha we're seeing it happen. Um, I'm going to just going to uh, embellish on it, and I'm going to tie this into my sermon. All right? We told you, did I not tell you, that as soon as gay, if and as soon as gay marriage passed, then all kinds of stuff was going to start happening. They've already got a guy going, getting ready to go to court to sue for polygamy, the right to be, to be, have polygamy. Because under the 14th Amendment, the equal rights protection, he views marriage as being able to be married to more than one person. But our laws say you can't. But the government says everybody has a right to whatever. The next thing that's already in the pipe, and, and, the, and the Nambla group is already working on it, um, is the uh, pedophilia. 
marriage. Now, they, they just posted studies um, from psychological journals that are saying that children who have been involved in pedophilia, with like NAMBLA and that kind of stuff, are not injured by the experience. Now, wait a second. You say, oh, that's disgusting. That's gross. We would never want that. These people are going to use the same gay agenda style thing to get their thing through. Now, since the psychological journals are now saying that the children are not harmed, we're going to get case studies that prove that the, the quote pedophile, but now the term is no longer pedophile and the psychological journals is now minor attracted adults. They're changing the terminology. So they change the terminology, they change the image of it, then they can say this person, and they're saying, they're saying I'm born this way. Who were you to judge me and to say that I can't? And they're going to use all the same court cases and they're going to use this homosexual agenda court cases to push all this through. Marriage will have absolutely, and it doesn't anymore, as far as the government's concerned, marriage no longer has any meaning. It's no longer an institution. Because if you can marry anybody, anything, and do anything you want, then it has no sacredness and it has no value. Okay? It is about silence in the church. They're already planning on suing churches for hate speech, for saying that they're... That they're um, that their lifestyle is, is, is wrong. The couple up in Seattle just got a gag order. Not just find $135,000 for not making the cake for the lesbians. Gag order. They can't even talk about it. Some federal justice, you can't talk about it. Their First Amendment right, they can't even express anything about it. Now, this is, this is what's happening to the country. You can lose liberty. Great pride. See, can you see where I'm heading? Hallelujah. Great price was paid <coughs> to obtain the liberty that after generations of people and, 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 and re-indoctrination and <coughs> dumbing down a society and revisionist history. Think about it now. America now, we used to be a, a proud nation of our accomplishments, of a place of godliness. People came to, to find freedom. Now is, we, we stole all the land from the Indians. We enslaved uh, millions of Africans. But I get, you know, the, the real interesting thing is the very first registered slave owner in America was a black man who had both white and black slaves. That went over big. Before, the first registered slave owner was a black man. Huh? Yeah, some of the first slaves were actual colonists coming from England as indentured servants to work off their debt to the crown. So, you know, slavery is a horrible, ugly history in, in, the, in the country. But you know what? Uh, we did something about it. It's done away with. Amen. They, 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 they knew they could not, when they got, the, they got the Constitution together, they knew they could not get all the states on board to sign the Constitution. So they left an ability to amend the Constitution because they knew later... They, the Constitution would be amended and do away with slavery. That's, that was why the amendment process was put in there. They knew they couldn't get it at that point, so they, they, they put the amendment process in so it could be done later because the people knew that it was going to happen eventually. All right? But now the revisionist history, America is evil. America has taken away, stolen everybody's uh, resources. America's is. And so now we're painted as the evil. Now people want to burn our flag. Farrakhan said, we need to burn the American flag because of what it stands for. I told him, we're going to have a gay rights rally, I mean, a, gay, a, a, a gay flag burning rally. See what happens. You'll have people all going crazy because we did that. It's hate speech. But you can burn the American flag, which is against the law, by the way. You, to burn the American flag in protest is against the law. The only time the American flag can be burned legally is in the retirement of the flag ceremony. That's the only time. Any other time, it's illegal. And that's a whole process, and it is a, it's kind of like cremating the flag. It's not, it's not done in protest. It's done in respect and retiring it permanently. Okay? But liberty has been, can you see the chipping away at the speed of light of our liberties? You got our courts are stacked with liberal justices who rule every, and just hope it goes to the Supreme Court and hoping they get the swing vote to go their way on the, on the case. They're legislating from the bench. 
They're trying to take your guns away. They want the guns. Why? Because if they get the guns, they got the nation. Hitler wanted the guns and got them, and they became a, they, 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 you saw what happened. Everywhere they take the guns, the, the, the radical looms take over. You can lose liberty. And the price paid to establish this nation and create liberty. Listen, why does Satan hate this country so much? Think about it now. 90% of missions, money, and missionaries up until recently came out of this country. Why do you think he's going after it with everything he's got? And trying to make it into, to turn into a radical, loony, bend bunch of crazies who don't, who don't understand that they're frogs in water being boiled. Because Satan's out to uh, take the liberty of us as natural citizens. Now, there was a great price paid for our spiritual liberty. And the parallels are stunning. As we come in now, they got this got a new teaching called radical grace, which means you can do anything you want to do because you can never lose your salvation because you're under grace. And it doesn't matter if, you are, if you're an adultery, if you're a drunkard, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're under grace. God loves you. You're going to get blessed no matter. You're going to get blessed whether you give or not. And we're living in the parallel instead of being the standard. God has called the church to be the standard. Jesus uh, quoted from Isaiah chapter 61, and there in Luke 4, 18, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. And one of the things that he said, and, and says in Isaiah, and then Jesus quotes over in Luke 4, is to, to, to deliver or to um, set at liberty the captives. With pride, <clears throat> his blood was shed to set us free. The church was called to a place of independence and freedom from the governance of the flesh. So I say glory to God. The governance of the flesh is not where we're to live. Those people who tell you that you can do whatever you want and get away with it and still go to heaven are trying to bring you back under the governance of the flesh. Just like in the natural, our nation, the radical, loony, bend liberals are trying to bring our country back under the rulership of an elitist uh, 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 rulers, which is basically a monarch, monarchical or dictatorship type governance. They're trying to bring us back under that where, where somebody can sit up there with a pen and write an ordinance and make the whole nation follow it called executive order. You know, you're, 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 you're dictating by the executive order in the White House, which is not, which is not what executive order was set up for. And people are, people are being told they've got to do this and they've got to do that. The EPA reg, regulation, the EPA, uh, one just got overturned. Thank God it was going to destroy a bunch of the economy. <clears throat> I, I believe, like I tell Nathan, I believe in um, legitimate, wise environmental protection. In other words, we don't dump toxins into the rivers you don't you don't uh clear cut five million acres and do nothing about don't don't replant anything i believe that there is there is um legitimate environmentalism that we should be involved in we should be concerned about we don't need to dump plastics into the ocean i agree with all of that but we don't need the government coming around and, and, and making up stuff about climate change and, and the, and the cool, earth has been cooling the past 20 years not getting warmer um you can't, there, there you're talking about with the, the, the new law that's trying, that they're trying to get passed, the, the, a regulation they're talking about passing, that you wouldn't even be able to barbecue your, in your backyard. Um, say, well, that wouldn't happen. It happens in England. They use satellite to see who's using grills. Yet they get fined on certain days. They're told they can't grill today. And they, uh, if they do, they use a satellite, they'll, they'll, go, they'll go find them. This is crazy. And what happens is, the more you give back to, the, the, to, to an elitist few to govern, the more they take. And the whole while, they're taking your rights and your liberties away. And the more you give to your flesh, and the more you give back to your flesh, the more control it takes. And the more of your rights in Christ, it, it robs from you. And the more it steals from you. Hallelujah. Go with me, if you will, over to the book of... Um, Galatians chapter 5. See, Christ came and purchased liberty for us. A great price was paid for it. But see, there's a lot of people who come into the church under little mantras or under little statements. Oh, just come and join our club and come and join this. <clears throat> who have no clue what Christ really died for. 
You don't have to change. You don't even have to get saved. Just come and, you know, join our rock climbing wall society and, you know, be part of the, the ministry and, you know, give here and there and we'll satisfy your need for religion. God's called us to more than that. We were not called to have a religion. We were called to have a personal, intimate relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ under the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Now, you understand why well, the church at Galatia had the letter written to it. The Judaizers were coming in and trying to rob them from the freedom they had found in Christ from having to try to just become justified through the law. In other words, they were coming in saying you have to be circumcised and you have to do this and you can't do this and you can't do that or you're not saved or you can't, you're, you know, you're, in other words, Christ came but your salvation is incomplete unless you're circumcised. They were trying to add to the requirements to be born again. Now the crazy gracers try to say when we say, hey, you're supposed to do things in the kingdom of God. Oh, you're putting some back under the law. No. The New Testament tells us to do stuff. Amen. And you're not going to get saved because you uh, stopped drinking. You're not going to get saved because you stopped fornicating. You should stop doing that because you got saved. Hello. You're, you're, the new birth should cause you to make, have changes, and that happens because you apply the liberty to your whole life. It says here, Paul's writing, and you know, and um, says here in verse uh, one of chapter five, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Stop. Christ made us free. Oh, that's you know. I, I read one preacher uh, said that he was called to preach happy things. Well, you know, he's a pastor. Now, let me say this, folks. I believe we, that the good news does preach happy things. But if you're a pastor, you've got to preach something that says, you know, a fluff and puff. I, like, I love the fluff and puff. I love the can of whipped cream with seven cherries and pour the cherry, cherry, cherry juice down the top of the stack of whipped cream. I love that. But you know, the Bible doesn't just stop with stand fast in the liberty. See, you've got been given liberty in Christ. You have been liberated. You are not liberated to do whatever you want to do. The liberty that Christ purchased for us was the liberty from the governance of the flesh. Bobblehead for me. Come on, guys. You're liberated from the dictates and the demands and the, cons and, and the constraints of the flesh. You've been liberated to serve God with your spirit. Amen. We are to serve God with our spirit and our body, what? Which are his. Great price was paid to liberate you from the governance of the flesh. And the flesh, the, the, the ruling authority over the flesh is Satan's kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. The laws of the spirit of, of, of uh, sin and death govern the flesh. And Paul writes and says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ made you free. We are to take a stand and not be moved. Everybody say, not be moved. From what Jesus paid the price for. But look what he says next. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, I shared this over Winston this morning. You know, uh, I, I know Alcoholics Anonymous has done a tremendous uh, work to help people get free from alcoholism. And one of the, very, the top points that you have to come to is you have to come to the realization that you're an alcoholic. Is it number one? And you, and you have to come to the place where you have to be able to say, I am an alcoholic. Okay? Now, I do not believe in their ongoing mantra that you say that for the rest of your life. Get up every day, look at me and say, I'm an alcoholic. Okay? I do agree with them wholeheartedly that you alcoholic has to come to the point they can look in the mirror and say, I am an alcoholic to begin the process of being free from that. Okay? They have to acknowledge it to get free from it. All right? <clears throat> well, one of the things that they did, and uh, I don't need my phone because this just died. I knew that was going to happen. 8% it was going to die before I got too far. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, next time, y'all send your stuff when it's on my hip so I get buzzed. I'm, I'm just messing. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Come on. Dropbox. Okay. 
One of the, uh, now I can, see, I can at least get my scriptures. Um, one of the things that they did after, you know, a number of years of having alcohol, it's anonymous, the people get it, you know, and, and so forth, is some genius thought, we'll try to teach people who've been alcoholics and NAA to drink socially again. So they can go out and be like everybody else and have a martini or have a mixed drink or whatever and just, and, and you know, uh, be mature about it and handle it, whatever. There's a reason they call it spirits. I said, there is a reason. Why? Because there's spirits behind it. And what they found out is as soon as these people started drinking, they started becoming alcoholics again. Why? Because they went back to the very thing that entangled them. That's like taking somebody who's been addicted to, uh, to pornography and telling them you can watch soft porn. Only topless nudity. Are you, are you stinking kidding me? If they've been addicted to it, the, the, the first thing they, they see something like that, they're going to be capture their mind, and they'll be right back in it. I've heard of people getting so caught up with they're spending two and $300 a day on Internet. Um, someone was telling me of, of someone they knew that I actually I knew the same person, but they, t they were spending $200 a day of their money to buy porn on the Internet as, an, as a, a demonic addiction. When you get free from that, you don't go back to that. You run from it. I said, the Bible, listen, the word of God says for us to abstain from the very appearance of evil. You know, I knew a guy, uh, and, and, and this is, where, we, Christ made us free. Say, Christ made me free. He came to liberate me from the governance of the flesh. Is that too big of a word? Being controlled by the flesh. Okay? Governance, you know, the, the ruling over, the ruling powers, or whatever. I knew a guy back in, in a church. And um, he, he ran a pizza place. Now, he got saved, and, you know, drinking was wrong, so he stopped drinking and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, but working in the pizza place and serving beer all the time, he just got, had that hankering. He wanted to have the flavor. He liked the flavor of beer with his pizza. Get over it. Now, everybody tells anybody that ever starts drinking beer, before they ever drink it, you got to acquire a taste for it. Why do you have to acquire, why are you going, it's like St. Chitlin's, folks. You got to acquire a taste for it. I can't get past the smell. Y'all know what I'm talking, if you ever cook chit, been with somebody cooking Chitlin's, you know what I'm talking about. It'll turn your stomach. And then they sit there and go, yeah, no. You think it's about that bad cooking? I ain't eating. I don't care what onions you put on it, whatever else you put on it. I just ain't doing it, Benny. I don't know about you, but I ain't doing it. Do you do Chitlin's? Okay, okay. <laughs> no. Anybody in here eat chitlins? Thank God I got smart church. Anybody been around cooking before? They have a chitlins festival down in South Carolina. Guess what they do? They cook them in another town 30 miles away and then bring them over. I'm serious. You wouldn't have anybody at the festival. What does that smell? Lunch. <laughs> Hallelujah. But anyway, this guy, he, he went, so what did he do? So you can't, you can't play with your flesh as a believer. You can't let it teeter-totter on the edge and try to see how far you can get without, and get away with it because it's going to sink you if you do. So he started drinking what they called near beer, which was supposed to, supposedly basically non-alcoholic beer. It had like 0.05%, you know, uh, but it, it, it wasn't alcoholic basically. It, it wasn't considered alcoholic. Guess what? Within a year, year and a half, he was drinking beer. He was out of church and wasn't serving God. Why? He became entangled again with the yoke of bondage that Christ has set him free from. Amen? Well, I, you know, I knew um, another guy in, our, in the church had um, been hooked on dope, smoking, smoking weed. Got saved, turned on to the Lord. Actually got in staff in the church with us, you know, staff uh, some kind of staff minister at the church or whatever, and uh, was hit, picked up a hitchhiker one day. And the guy said, hey, and he's going through a little bit of a hard place. I'll tell you, you can't trust your flesh. He's having a little bit difficult. Listen, we all go through difficult times. What do we do when we go through difficult times? We turn to the Lord. We put our trust in him. We seek the face of God, and we stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. We well, picked this hitchhiker up, and the guy says, hey, man, you want, you want to smoke, you want some weed? 
And the guy said yes. Smoked one joint and went straight from there to crack. Started going around the local cities, not the, the, not the main city there, but the ones of the smaller towns around town, and robbing people by gunpoint on the streets to get money to go buy crack. Started robbing the church, had a key to the church, started stealing equipment and hawking the equipment. Saw the videotape, the, the pastor thought he was going to help him out by um, um, not pressing charges, you know, being merciful. Well, he went from there, went down to another local town, went in and robbed the church and shot the pastor. And the pastor's sitting there, he's, he's begging him to forgive, please forgive me, man. I'm a minister too, I'm a minister, and, and please forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Shot him and, still, and then still sold the money. Didn't kill him, but he shot him. And uh, of course, he called the police and they chased him, and he was trying to get back to the church that he went to when they chased him across the field and tackled him, and they put him on television. I'm a minister at the church, I'm a minister at the church. What happened? He became entangled again with the yoke of bondage because he did not stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ had set him free. I have watched time and time again people fall off the wagon and go back into the world because they would not do the word. Hello? I've seen people die because of it heard them go back to the ways of life that they had before and die in destruction and misery because they would not stay free because they would not honor and stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set them free. Look at James chapter 1. My encouragement to you today is this. Do not take for granted the price paid for your liberty and do not ignore the power of the liberty he's given you. Stand fast in it. Remain steadfast in the things of God. James chapter 1. Verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, now do what? Get rid of it. Stop doing it. All right? And receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass or in a mirror. He behold, he go, uh, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Now see, if you don't stay with the word, you'll forget. See, if we, because we don't teach history in our schools anymore, we teach revisionist history, the kids don't even know why we have a, a, a 4th of July. As a matter of fact, we're, we're, they're, they're taught that we, we are um, aggressionist and imperialist and, you know, and capitalism is evil and it was just, you know, we're, we're taking advantage of poor people while we're making certain rich people rich and all this kind of stuff. And the people preaching are the ones that are living that way. You think about it. How many, you know, how many people in Congress are rich? And if they show up not rich, they end up walking out rich. Why? Because they can do insider trading. You can't do it. They can. Did y'all know that? That Congress is exempt from insider trading laws. Meaning they could cut a deal with whoever, Xerox or, and it's, I'm just throwing names. I'm not, I don't know who they are. I'm just saying any company, uh, maybe, maybe Xerox, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll absolve ourselves or, uh, Redact the fact that Xerox was a name mentioned. Some big corporation. And I have no evidence that Xerox was involved in anything. I just, I just came up with a name. All right? But some big corporation, they can go in there and get a law passed to benefit that company, and they can have their stocks in it in advance so when it passed, they get rich because they're exempt from insider trading laws. Yeah, real estate deals, zoning ordinances, everything. They're exempt well, sounds like we already got the gar garbage going on. The revisionist history. But we, we, we got, we're not being taught of the price of freedom. 
That, that, and I'm going to tell you something. I don't know who did it, and I don't know who posted it, but they ought to be slapped with a two-by-four upside the head. They took the, the Iwo Jima memorial flag picture and put a gay flag on it. I'm sorry. Your little plight is nothing like what those guys were going through to take that island. It's just a low-life move. Those guys shed blood. They hurt my feelings. Oh, I don't really give a rip. Get saved and get delivered. Because you need it. Amen. But he, uh, he heareth the word and is not a doer. Okay, he beholds himself, goes his way, and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. We're not, see, we're not holding history in front of our kids. They don't know what, what we're all about anymore. We're not holding the word before the church anymore. They don't know what their, what their liberty is all about. We're not telling people that what the price Jesus paid. You got people say, well, I can be a Christian and not really believe that Jesus was God's son. You cannot. How in the world? I'm like, go be a Muslim. It's going to get you the same thing. At least you won't be deceived about who Jesus was. Hello? But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty... God's word is the perfect law of liberty. And continueth. What's that mean? You don't walk away from it. You stay with it. I, I learned that 20 years ago. Tough. You got to live in it today. Amen. Him being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work. Not word, work. You work the word. This man. Everybody say this man. What man? The one who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein and does it. Is blessed in his deed. See, freedom, we've, we've heard this mantra before, freedom ain't free. And let me say something, keeping freedom ain't free. And staying free ain't free. There's a price paid to get us free and to keep us free and to live free. And in, our gov in, our, in the natural, in the military, it takes a price to keep us free. In the spiritual, a, an eternal price was paid, but it, you, have to, you have to walk in the light of it. If we do not protect our shores, people will take over our country. Now, the communists, the Russians and the Chinese both always said back in the big days of communism, they will not destroy America from the outside. They will destroy it from the inside. They will bring us down from the inside. And what have they done? We've got the Marxist, liberal, socialist, humanist, uh, cosmic humanists and secular humanists getting every radical lunatic crazy put to the courts they can and they're running the country through the courts. R liberal ideologies. Crazy ideologies. And they're destroying the country because no one, the people who, know, who, who should know the truth, don't know the truth. The, 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 remember, the, the government is for the people, by the people, and of the people. But you know what's happening? All the people don't know what's going on, so they just let that about us do it for them. And when you stop standing in your liberty in Christ Jesus, and you start letting the flesh, and you start letting the, the powers and principalities and rulers of the darkness of this world govern and rule over you, and you relinquish your authority, you know, because you are now a Christian, you have authority, and instead of using your authority, just like the Americans have done with of, uh, for, and by, they're now letting... The, the little congressmen or the judges rule it and run everything, voting for people that, that they shouldn't be voting for and supporting people they shouldn't be supporting. Well, it's going to make me more money if I vote for this guy. Yeah, but he believes in homosexual marriage and believes in abortion. How can you as a Christian stand for either one? Give me a scripture. I can give you scriptures that will blow your doors in on homosexuality, and you can't come up with one that doesn't. I, can, I got more scriptures. Love. If you love God, you'll hate what God hates. God hates sin. He doesn't hate the sinner, but he hates sin. Do not tell me that God loves homosexuality. He hates it. He even says it's an abomination. And you've got Christians embracing it, changing the little profile picture with the little gay flag over top of them. How dare you? Who do you think you are? To spit in the face of God. If you're truly a Christian, you hate what he hates. You love what he loves and you hate what he hates. He hates sin. Why? Because sin ultimately destroys you 
and he loves you. Therefore, he hates sin. See, the world gets it backwards. They think love means, let me do whatever I want to do. That's not love. I said last week, and I'll say it again this week. If you are condoning and embracing and rejoicing in homosexual marriage, you hate the homosexual. No, I love them. No, you hate them. I love them. You hate them. Because you're damning their soul to hell. I love them because I'm telling them what do to not go to hell. The true lovers are the ones who are telling them what not to do so they can go to heaven. The haters are the ones who are, letting, who are embracing their sin and damning their soul to hell so that they can look popular and be accepted by everybody. And nobody persecute them. You hate the homosexual. Thank you, Benny. <laughs> God hates homosexuality because it destroys the homosexual and the homosexual goes to hell whom he loves. God hates murder because it destroys the murderer and they go to hell. He loves the murderer. Doesn't love murder. He hates murder. Amen. Liberty is being lost because people aren't seeing what the, word, what the Constitution says and the Declaration says and what history says. The church is losing its liberty because we're listening to people tell us we can live like the world and be like the world and it doesn't matter. And you're becoming more and more entangled in the yoke of bondage every day when you do that. And the people doing it are selling books and selling tapes and making a lot of money. They don't love people. I said they don't love the people because if they did, they'd tell them the truth. I said they would tell them the whole truth. Amen? Praise the Lord. So on that thought, we're going to stand fast in our liberty. Amen. So what do we do? We look into the perfect law. We do what the Word says. We live free. We live in our authority. We preach. We do what the Word says. We live like Christ. We're imitators of God as dear children. Amen? We speak the Word only. We do like the Bible. We put off, we put off the old man and put on the new man, which is created in Christ Jesus after righteousness and true holiness. We live lives that please our Father and tell the flesh no. I said, tell the flesh no. You know, your flesh is like a dog. Puppy dog, grown up dog, it don't matter. Dog is a dog. You can beat the snot out of it for getting in the trash can, walk out of the room, and come back, and they'll be back, back in it. Now, they might run when they hear your footsteps, but they went right, they never repent. They're never in a repentant state. They don't like getting beat and they'll, they'll cry and they'll run off. But the first chance they get, they'll be right back in it. And that's your flesh. First chance it gets, it'll be right back in it. So you don't give it a chance. You offer your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is a living. You don't cruci you put it, you keep it as a, a lot, living sacrifice. You keep it crucified. Figuratively speaking, we're not Filipinos. We don't crucify ourselves physically, but uh, uh, symbolically, we keep ourselves crucified. We keep our flesh under, and we do God's will, and we live in the liberty. You weren't called to be controlled by your flesh. You were called to live out of your spirit and honor God and please God. And walk in that whole new plane all together as we preach uh, you know, out of one of our books. You know, that, that when we were born again, we were called to, to, to newness of life. One, one translation says to a whole new plane all together. We're living in newness of life. We live in a whole new, what's the whole new plane? Not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Walk where God is. Communion with the creator. The father of spirits. So your flesh will take you out of that place. What did Adam's flesh do? It took him and hid him from God's presence. Your flesh will do the same thing to you. When you walk in the Spirit, and live in the Spirit, you can sing that old song. I walk through the garden. I go to the garden, that's what it is. And he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. Amen. 
I go to the garden. Oh, I forget how it starts. I just know the song. Maybe y'all can help me out there. Melinda going to jump up and lead? I just, okay. We can, have the, we can have the walks with God. Live in the Spirit. Live above the flesh. Amen? Oh, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. Hallelujah. And he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Thank God. That's where we're supposed to live. You don't get there entangled with the yoke of bondage. You don't get there trying to get away with everything you can get away with. You get there by going to spend the time with God and living in his word. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, PO Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.